Hello and welcome back. This is Junhua from TCM Explain. In the last video, we learned about qi. In this video, we are going to learn about blood. First, let's talk about the formation of the blood. The main source of qi and blood is the spleen and stomach. These two organs are the root of the post heaven and they extract energy from food and drinks. In the last video, we said the stomach digests food and the spleen transforms that into food qi, which is sent to the lungs where it meets with air to form gathering qi. Gathering qi is further transformed into true qi with the help of original qi. Food qi is also sent to the heart from the lungs and then transformed into blood with the help of original qi. So in production of blood, many organs are involved. There is the stomach, spleen, lungs, and heart. But there are still two more organs involved. There is a saying, if qi is not exhausted, it returns essences to the kidneys to be transformed into essence. If the essence is not depleted, it returns essence to the liver to be transformed into blood. Here we can see that the liver is involved in the production of blood as well. Also, the first half of this phrase tells us something about the involvement of the kidneys in the production of blood. It says, if there is enough qi, it can be stored as essence in the kidneys. We already know kidney essence produces marrow. Marrow is one of extra full organs that contributes to making blood. Also, original qi from the kidneys contributes to the transformation of food qi into blood in the heart. So it's important to remember that the production of blood involves not only post heaven, the spleen and stomach, but also pre heaven, the kidneys. So far, we know that blood can be made from qi, essence, and marrows. Lastly, there is one more, body fluid. Within the blood vessel, there is nutritive qi that secretes body fluids, which can be transformed into blood. There is a saying, body fluids and blood are of the same origin. That is because both of them essentially originate from food and drinks transformed by the spleen and stomach, and they can transform into each other as well. Inside the blood vessels, body fluids transform into blood, and outside of the blood vessels, blood transforms into body fluids. As a side note, the blood vessels is one of the extra full organs which is related to the heart and lungs. The heart governs blood and vessels, and the lungs control channels and blood vessels. Also, both of them are involved in the production of blood. So the stomach, spleen, lungs, heart, kidneys, and liver, total of six organs are all involved in the production of blood. That is how blood is formed, and now let's talk about the circulation of blood. There are four organs that are involved with the circulation of blood. The heart, lungs, spleen, and liver. The heart governs blood and vessel. The physical heart organ pumps blood. This is easy to understand. Second organ is the lungs. The lungs not only control channels and blood vessels, but also govern qi. There is a saying, Qi moves, blood follows. Qi stagnates, blood congeals. That is because Qi is the commander of blood and Qi is the force behind the circulation of blood. Also, we can see that there is a close relationship between the lungs and heart. The lungs govern Qi, the heart governs blood. The lungs and heart both are in upper burner meaning the upper part of the trunk above the diaphragm. And as you remember, both of them are related to blood vessels and gathering qi, which promotes the respiration and blood circulation. Third organ is the spleen. The spleen controls blood. 
this control refers to the spleen's function of keeping blood circulating within the blood vessels and preventing it from leaking out. Lastly, the liver stores blood and maintains the free flow of qi. These functions allow the liver to regulate blood volume by deciding how much blood to store in the liver or how much blood to flow out of the liver. When we are resting, blood is stored in the liver, but when we are active, blood comes out to nourish the active body parts. Because the liver is closely related to Ren and Chong channels, which are related to the uterus, most common pathologies related to the dysfunction of the liver's storing blood involves menstrual disorders. Also, when there is dysfunction of maintaining the free flow of qi, there will be stagnation of blood because when qi moves, blood follows, qi stagnates, blood congeals. To summarize, as far as blood circulation is concerned, the heart, lungs, and liver are involved with the transporting functions of qi, whereas the spleen and liver are involved with the holding functions of qi. Before we end this video, let's talk a little bit about the functions of blood. Blood is yin, so nurturing is its nature. There is a saying, qi is the commander of blood, and blood is the mother of qi. It means qi generates blood, moves blood, and holds blood, but it relies on the nourishing and moistening function of blood. Also, don't forget that if the essence is not depleted, it is returned to the liver to be transformed into blood, and blood can also nourish and replenish essence. Besides qi and essence, blood can nourish various tissues and organs as well. For instance, liver blood nourishes the eyes and sinews and regulates the uterus. Lastly, blood is the material foundation for qi and mind. Qi and mind are relatively young, blood is relatively yin. Blood anchors qi and mind, not letting them to float. When qi or mind is not rooted by blood, there may be deficiency heat symptoms or mental disorders. In TCM Physiology series, we will learn that heart houses the mind, and heart blood serving as a solid material foundation is important for mental activities. That's it for today. In the next video, we are going to learn about body fluids.